Hudson Bay CEO Jerry Storch on whether consumers will, uh, and particularly on the toy front, uh, lead this parade uh, for what is expected to be a robust holiday shopping season. Uh, Jerry, very good to see you. Good to see you. Um, how are things looking on just the retail front in general from your perspective? Very strong. Uh, the consumer has been strong all year. They carried that into the holidays and sales continue to be strong. And I expect this weekend to be phenomenal. This is a super Saturday tomorrow. Exactly. And it's, the calendar is about as perfect as a retailer dreams of. This is what you, you wait for and it doesn't happen very often. So Christmas on the Tuesday, the longest period of time between Thanksgiving and Christmas, this weekend's going to be huge. All right. Now, um, even in tough times, parents, adults don't skimp on kids. That was You've always reminded me of that. Yep. We've talked over recessions and bull markets alike. Uh, I guess the bigger question is what happens after this holiday, though. Everyone seems to be pointing to a, a slower economy, uh, not, not a recession, but slower. Uh, what do you see? Well, the consumer doesn't know that. And uh, consumers tend to spend based on what's in their wallet now. Consumers are now, 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 yeah. uh, and the market is forward looking. And so you have a little bit of disconnect going on there. So employment's high, wages are high. So outside of luxury goods, which are impacted by the market because there's kind of a wealth effect as the very rich people see their, uh, see their net worth decline. Outside of that- of Tiffany, right? Yeah, uh, uh, Tiffany was that, plus what's going on in China where they have big exposure and the Chinese are very soft, you know, partially because of the whole thing going on with the uh, with the tariffs and the trade war. But uh, but uh, regardless, uh, the the basic consumer is very strong. The economy is very strong on that fundamental level. Now, whether or not you know they follow, so whether or not uh, there'll be a recession next year and then the consumer won't have money in their pocket, that remains to be seen. But right now they do, and they are spending it, and they're going to spend it on Christmas, and they don't care about the government shutdown. Yeah. They've seen oh they've seen that. They over really again. don't. Oh yeah. they've seen that over. We again. in the media, so I think we say that we've gotten used to it. But let me ask you about toys. So your, your lifeblood. And I, uh, the dynamics have changed since uh, your old haunt uh, just fell into bankruptcy long after you left, yep. I might point out. Thank you. But, but uh, this concern that uh, online has, has dominated this, Walmart has, has dominated this, are there as many toys out there or, or what? What happened? So it isn't so much online. I mean, the, the all-channel model is working. And as you point out, Walmart remains the market share leader. Target. Target is very strong in toys. And Amazon is very strong in toys. So you can win multiple ways. But with a, with a huge capacity taken offline with the demise of Toys R Us, you're looking at something that may be 18% of the market. You know, the supply side disappeared. You didn't, you didn't find all that replaced immediately. And everybody tried to add a little toys. The people just uh, uh, playing around with it, the ones who added toys who never did it before, they're going to be so sorry and they're going to lose their shirts and they aren't going to do it anymore. Right? Well, it's, it is a complex business. You have to be able to pick the hits and back them big with inventory. And if you, if you back the wrong things, it's just going to be write-offs come January because nobody buys toys in January. So you come back to Walmart, Target, and Amazon, they all bought more. But they didn't buy enough more to make up for what, what uh, happened at Toys R Us. And there is a supply when side. When you say enough more, what's in short supply? Well, plenty of hot toys are clearly out of stock. I read a report recently that many of them are already out of stock on the shelves of, of many of these uh, other, other retailers. And one of the things Toys R Us always try to do is have them in stock all the way till Christmas. But you so, had to make a bet. You had a good gut with this. What would go, We could go back to Cabbage Patch yeah. days and all. But the bottom <laughs> line is that... You are playing a little bit of Russian roulette. Well, Toys R Us was integral to the market. It was part yeah. and parcel of the market. So it was difficult to tell where the vendors ended and Toys R Us began. So they are big losers in this, the toy vendors. I'm not saying they can't make it up over a period of years, but not in one year. And so the amount added by, toy, by Walmart and Target and Amazon to the marketplace is insufficient to make up for what happened at Toys R Us. And we saw that in some toy data that was down pretty sharply at the start of the holiday season in terms of sales. So I, that doesn't mean kids aren't going to have toys eventually. It'll, it'll, the market will reset. New entrants will enter the market. Various things will occur. Maybe Toys R Us will come back. Who knows? And a lot of the and, toy makers then open up their own sites and uh, you can buy directly from them. That's a thing. I'm just wondering where you see it all going then. Uh, eventually, uh, I believe the market will reach a new equilibrium, uh, unless there's a major player like Toys R Us. So I think it'll be at a lower level than it would have been because, there, you know, uh, we all study economics in school and the supply curve and demand curve, and there's less supply. The equilibrium is going to be at a lower place, and that's simply what's going to happen. But some can come back in different forms. I'm thinking of FAS Awards. You know, they shut down sure. at a store in Midtown Manhattan, reopen one, albeit smaller. Uh, so there's always the chance, you think, and I always think in the back of my mind, 
something as iconic as a Toys R Us can't 850 forever. stores Toys R Us, around you know kind of Toys R Us and Babies R Us in in the, in the country eight eight billion dollars of sales that's not easily replaced so you know over time the market will reset in the short term it's quite disruptive to have something like that occur you can't make up for it uh, in a flash and it really does help to have a specialist category killer you have that electronics with the Best Buy you ha you certainly have that in other categories and other segments of the market in home goods you have in in a home building supply you have two you have Lowe's and uh, home Depot both so it really helps to build the market now it, consumers will still spend for Christmas I want to emphasize that Christmas sales are up holiday sales are yeah. very strong the consumer has come to play and they're buying but if they don't that, buy toys they'll buy electronics could really have awesome. limped through the Christmas season though and then 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 you know reassess themselves the, the demise of toys has, has more to do with the high leverage on the company right. and the and the specific situation with individual creditors and what they wanted and how they felt they could get the most money than it had to do with uh, an in ability to compete I've seen in the that in scores of industries you and I are sending in the break uh, you better some money than no money and at the risk now it's going to be no there's money. going to be a lot more of it with Sears bankruptcy yes, we'll see where that ends up but it's not going to be good so no. Jim Barry filed for bankruptcy all of these LBOs and highly leveraged companies it's not going to be good going forward because retail requires too much capital right now in order to invest in the internet and the stores at the same time in order to build the perfect model and it takes